Hi guys, welcome back. Yours truly making here. It has been several years and it is time for a refresh and a little bit of a makeover for my bedroom. First, I need a new bed. My walls ended up never matching my curtains like I originally planned, but I will explain why later. And lastly, I want to bring in some really bold wallpaper. So let's get started. to give the ceiling a new coat of paint, but not just any basic paint. My bedroom ceiling is lower than the other parts of my apartment, and even though I have two large windows in my bedroom, I don't really get any direct sunlight, and even during the day, it's somewhat dark. I got this idea to lighten, brighten, and raise my ceiling from the textile designer, Nina Campbell. I think we should pay more attention to ceilings in our decorating because in this room it's a low ceiling and I couldn't make it any higher. So I did a lacquer finish and it lifts the whole room. Yes, I am going to lacquer the ceilings. The new bed is coming later tomorrow. So let's break down the old one, giving me a little more room to paint that ceiling. I love this bed, but it is about 13 years old and it is white. Even though the cover comes off to wash, over the years it has gotten harder and harder to really keep clean. Plus my doggies nibbled their own design into the frame, so it's just time for a new one. Okay, for my lacquer, I will be using Ferro and Ball's Full Gloss, which is a high gloss lacquer, which can be used on all surfaces, but it needs a special base paint to help it adhere to the walls. Your prep is so key to great results. I taped up my borderline and went over the line with some acrylic filler, you know, the acrylic, uh, that paintable acrylic caulking. Just smoothing it out with my fingers and a little warm soapy water. I do not care how good the painter's tape is. Some paint will always leak under the tape, especially if you have textured walls. I promise you, you will get the most crisp, finest lines if you just take a little extra time to do this. 100%, I swear, 100%. Okay, and using the caulking, I filled in any cracks where the ceiling and walls meet. I live in the top apartment in my building, and there is only a not so ideally insulated attic above me. The differentiation in the attic and room temperatures, you know, in winter it's colder in the attic than in my apartment, and in the summer, vice versa. This can cause that cracking. One is expanding with the warmth, while the other one is constricting with the cold. I have learned using the acrylic filler or this acrylic caulking where they meet can prevent this. It gives the meeting point more flexibility. Yeah, I didn't know this back when I first painted my bedroom, but now I know. Using a combo of a small and large basic wall paint roller you know, the terry cloth kind, and a brush for the corners. I painted on the ferro and ball base coat for light colors. that we're using from Farrell and Ball. I'm using Windborne White. It's a little bit of a warmer white because I really want like a warmer light in here. And like I said here, this for all surfaces. This is made, what? Made durable gloss for interior, exterior, wood, and metal. So like I said, this is a full lacquer, something you can use on the floor, you can use on furniture. And because of that base coat you have to use, it helps it to adhere to the walls. And we're using 
paint rollers that are made for lacquering or lacquering or um, varnishing. They're more of that like styrofoam, spongy material. Um, and here I have them in small ones. I have larger ones. You don't want to use the regular terry cloth, like uh, fluffier um, rollers that I used yesterday for the, um, come in the camera so you guys see me, what I used yesterday for the regular base coat because you don't want to leave any kind of texture in the lacquer and in the gloss and you'll notice that I won't be using a paintbrush either because I don't want any paint strokes in there. So just the small roller and the large roller. So let me get this shaken up, pour it into the container here and we'll get to glossy. Last corner. Okay guys, I'm finished with the first coat. Oh, it took me about two hours. I think I got everything covered good. I hope you can see how this is shining. Here, let me try to go for a close up. And then will that focus? Don't have a lot of light in here. But yeah, there you can see the shine. After two hours, this is the first corner I started in. So this is very much dry, pretty much dry. So you can imagine, see how shiny it is? You can imagine after a second coat and after I take the tape off and you see the contrast with the shiny against the matte wall color, you'll see, you can imagine how high gloss it's gonna be. Okay, I'm gonna take about an hour break and then uh, we're gonna do the second coat. Actually, I have a lot of time. I'm contemplating if I even do a third coat. Okay guys, I just finished the last corner of the second coat. We can go up here on the ladder and start taking the tape off. It's always good with the acrylic filler to take the tape off, but it's still a little wet or moist from the paint. Okay, here we go. Let me start in the corner here. Watch this. You guys, look at that perfect line there. Yes, the new bed arrived. I went with something similar in design, but I went for a darker color this time, and this bed has a box spring. Okay, should we try it out? Oh, God, yes. Okay, guys, I am done so far with this phase of refreshing our bedroom. I must tell you, I've always had a white bed, so I was a little unsure about getting a darker colored one this time, but I must tell you, I'm liking it. I really am liking it. Love how all my pillows still go very well with the gray color. It was very important to me that these pillows would stay in my bed decor because number one, fabric was very expensive. Number two, I sewed all these pillows myself. I actually feel like they look even better with the gray bed than the white bed. And the same for the new like violet veined marble tops that I had recently cut for my uh, vintage uh, nightstands there. Now I'm gonna show you a little B-roll of the ceiling first with just pure sunlight. And now with all the lights on, you see how it reflects the light beautifully and how shiny it is. Okay, some of you are probably thinking, Megan is not so, you know, mirrored and, and, and so smooth as an example in the quintessence video that I showed you. Well, it's very common for these parts of the world to use raw fibered wallpaper for the walls and sometimes the ceilings in the rooms that you need to stay a little bit more warmer or cooler. And yeah, I could have taken it off, but number one, that would have been very time consuming and very messy. And remember I told you guys, 
The attic above me is not well insulated, so that wallpaper or that thicker, rough, raw fiber wallpaper it helps to keep my bedroom warm in the winter and keep it cool then in the summer. So that was something I really, it, it's necessary and it's something that I really couldn't change, but I do feel like if it was totally smooth and totally mirrored, that might've been too much, especially for a bedroom with you trying to sleep. I find the difference amazing of the reflection and how lighter and fresher this room is working. Okay, now for the wall color. I want to go for a soft monochromatic look with different variations of the same color. As I said before, it was important that my pillows work with the new design and I plan to keep the same curtains. Maybe I should start by showing you the wallpaper I chose. I found on Etsy this beautiful paper. I love the large bold herons. It gives me a very zen Japanese feeling it also has the current colors in my pillows and curtains, taupe, blue-gray, white, Bordeaux. So I need to find a wall color that can pull the pillows, curtains, and wallpapers together. As you see here, I tried many colors and many different companies. I will give you a tip when trying to match a wall color and fabric, turn the fabric over because it may be a different color on the back side. This underweave color influences the undertones of the fabric. The reverse side of my curtain fabric was very taupe. And the winner is Pavilion Gray from Ferro and Ball, an intense blue gray with taupe undertones. Okay, let's get to painting some walls. Prep is king, or in my case, queen, caulking all tape lines, top, bottom, and sides and I painted over all swatches that were not going to be covered with wallpaper with um, a little bit of white paint. I just used the base paint from the ceiling. Welcome back. Okay, it's been about a week letting the walls dry and it is now time to wallpaper this wall behind me. I think one thing I forgot to tell you what I did in preparation before painting is that I filled in all the holes where all my artwork was because I'm not quite sure what's coming back into this room after the wallpaper is up. You know, I'm not sure what's going to fit, what's going to if it's going to have the same look that I want or the new design that I want. Only two pictures I was totally sure about and knew that they would stay in their exact place was my two um, uh, photos of Kate Moss and I'll show you that I already rehung those so I could move the sideboard back into its place so we have room to set up the wallpaper tables and have a little room here to work. But before we get started, I want to give you guys a really big important tip when choosing your wall color make sure you have all your samples fabrics wallpapers whatever you're going to use all together 
while you're choosing your wall paint. But still, do not order that wall paint into the orders of all those fabrics and all those wallpapers have arrived. I learned that the hard way the first time when I was even decorating this room a few years ago that I had a sample of fabric for my curtains, picked out the wall color, and while the order for the fabric was coming in, I went ahead and painted the walls. When the fabric came in, it wasn't as blue as the sample, so then my walls were bluer than my curtains. Because a lot of times, different dye lots, it's a little bit of difference in color variation. And I'm glad I learned that lesson last time, because this time when I was deciding on wall colors, I had my top three, and I'm glad I waited. But because when I ordered the wallpaper, and I'll show you guys here the difference between the sample and what I ordered, what came in. The sample was a little bluer. What I ordered is a little bit more taupe, but that helped me to decide under my top three which one was going to be perfect. So do not buy your wall paint and paint your walls until all your orders and all your fabrics, all your wallpaper, everything you want to decorate with has arrived because there are always slight variations in color. Okay, as you see behind me, there is a red line. I have a vertical laser up here. I live in an old building. Walls and ceilings are not even. So I wanted to make sure that I got a perfect vertical and horizontal line that I have to follow. And you see my white line that I originally painted, even though it looks even and it looks level, it's really not. So I'm gonna follow all the red lines. I'll have to cut off at the top what I need, sides and bottom. Okay. This is a special wallpaper I ordered from a company called Wallpaper for Beginners. It doesn't come in rolls. It comes in sheets that are 70 centimeters by 100. I will leave the link down below for the company. And the first instruction is to mix the glue. And you're supposed to put the glue on the back of the sheets, let them dry for 15 minutes, then you have to re-glue them and re-glue the wall before you start applying. So let's get started with mixing up glue and putting the first layer of glue on. Okay guys, an instruction said one package to one and a half liters of water. It never got sticky. They said it would get thicker. It didn't. And I ended up adding another half packet of the powder glue to the mix. Mixed it for two to three minutes, waited 15 minutes, and it did get thicker. And when I went back and looked at the company's tutorial, I was very suspicious that they didn't even use their own glue. They actually used this brand of professional glue, but we'll get to that later. Okay guys, I am finally finished, but because of the mismeasurement instructions with the first glue, I ended up buying some of that professional glue because I ran out of the other glue. I found that it wasn't as easy to shift around the paper with the professional glue, but it did melt the edges into the wall much better and into each other. So you see me going back here over edges with the new glue ones that I had, you know, glued with the old glue and just melting in those edges a lot better. And another problem with this wallpaper was the coloring. If you see here, when the four corners met, 
the two lower corners were bluer than the top corners, which were a little bit more taupe beige. At first I thought that I got a sample that was a little bit off, but that was the problem. So everywhere there's a little bit of uh, not fitting coloring. And there was one place on every sheet of the print I could not get to fit together. You see this black on the neck and on the wing? Yeah, I couldn't get it to match up. So of course your girlfriend, who is an anal retentive perfectionist, a cup and a half neurotic, and a tablespoon of out of her goddamn mind, went afterwards with a felt tip paint pen and I painted that all by hand and corrected it. Yes, I can't believe I did it, but I'm very satisfied with it now. I found this convenient, cute cube extension cord so I don't have all the cables from my light and my phone running from the plug here. Now it's time to bring things back in and decorate. Beautiful vintage Chinese rug I found on Etsy. I will leave the link down below. I am loving how the new wall color matches my curtains perfect. So much better than before. For those liking the combination, the curtain fabric is from Designers Guild from their Tiber collection in the color platinum, but I'll leave the link and the product number down in the description box below. Are you guys ready for the reveal? My inspiration was a monochromatic color scheme using different hues of the same shade color as you see in the wall color, color of my curtains, and the bed and bed linen colors. But by picking prints with the same shade as you see in the wallpaper, new rug, and my pillows, the monochromatic look is slightly broken up and adds a little freshness. This can also help the look from becoming outdated too soon. I decided against my original two chairs for the sitting area. Instead, I repurposed the lilac chairs that were originally in my living room. I find them to give a more calmer look and to be more cohesive. As for the sideboard area, I'm still working on the decor there. Loving the new paper mache lamp, and I believe the abstract artwork will find a new home hung between the lamps. If I rehang, the other artwork that was originally there also is still to be decided. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you don't want to leave a comment, a thumbs up is just as effective. I hope to see you here again, not only in my world of all things design, but because the bedroom is not totally complete and there will be some design updates. Perfect interior design is curated over time. You have to sit with it, sometimes make changes. Okay, thanks guys, and as always, yours truly, Heart Macon. Am I gonna be able to sit still in this thing? Okay, that's not. Okay. <laughs>